All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, first of all, I'm just going to start out with gratitude and say I'm so thankful I woke up. Um, Lisa and I set probably like 10 reminders because <laughs> I'm like, I always have that fear that um, I am going to miss it when it's my day. And I, I laugh because I have missed it before. And I'm always that one that says, put me on the schedule because I want to be accountable and then I sleep through it and then you girls have to cover me. But, you know, it's grace over guilt. Don't we love that? Anyway, so good morning. Good morning. Y'all know we always start with gratitude. And I will say I'm thankful for my capsules this morning. Um, not just a um, surface level, just very thankful because I am a little tired from traveling. Thankful for a product that we can stand behind that works. Um we start with gratitude, like y'all know, every morning. And it's just, it's not just something we say, it's something we do. And gratitude changes everything. You know, gratitude is something that if, you know, something is going wrong, you can shift that mindset and go, you know, uh, you know, I'm thankful at least, you know, I have a pulse today. I have a purpose. Um, you know, yesterday I was very frustrated with, um, being an Uber in the car and um, it was, you know, I was headed to the airport and I thought I am going to miss my flight. Like my, my luggage isn't going to make the flight. And I had to shift my mind. I'm like, you know, there's nothing I can do to change it. It's not like I'm going to tell the driver, stop this car. Let me get out there. There's nothing I can do with my luggage. You know, if I miss that, I'm just going to have to figure it out. I'm going to have to make another plan. I'm going to have to find out what my options are. I, am in this car. I am safe. Um, we're not stopped on the side of the highway for a crash. I mean, I, you have to shift that mindset. You have to take control of that, those thoughts and gratitude is something that will, will help you to control and to refocus and to put those thoughts in the direction of, you know, where they should go. Now, does it mean that we don't have struggles? We don't have obstacles? No, it doesn't mean that. But there are some times where you literally, there's nothing you can do. So getting upset or getting frustrated is not going to change it. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to have that every single day. Every single day, you're going to start your day and organically things are going to happen. And if you learn to practice that gratitude, um, another, just yesterday, I'm sitting on the tarmac. We had a mechanical issue and my flight was on the tarmac for a whole hour. Um, the flight was an hour. It, here's the thing. It's so there, there was nothing I could do about it, right? Complaining about it, getting stressed out about it, being frustrated, you know, it didn't help. So I was able to say, you know, I'm thankful at least they kicked on the air. I'm thankful I, have, I brought, I was prepared and brought a really good book to read. Um, so that's in everything. That's in everything with your children, with your business. You know, maybe your business is not where you want it to be, but I'm thankful that somebody introduced this opportunity to me. Um, I'm thankful for a product that um, I can use and um, share with other people passionately that I can talk about it and and stand behind it. So anyway, I, I just, you know, gratitude is something I've, I've talked about for a very, very long time. Um, I just, I don't want us ever to get in a place where we are just doing it, um, just going through the motions. And sometimes you do, you know, you're like, I don't feel grateful today, but I'm doing it because I know that this is a practice that I've put in place. So really, really take the time um, to, to stop. Um, I have, when I wake up in the morning, literally, that's when my eyes open. I used to, when I started gratitude, I used a journal, I used sticky notes, I used things like that. Now, um, it's just part of my, my morning routine is I open my eyes, I am grateful, I put gratitude out into my world, into my space, and um, I literally just do that every single day. So the other thing that I, I want to encourage you guys, because I always, you know, visit with you guys a couple of times a month on in the morning vibe tribe is um, practice exercising that with people that you're grateful for. Um, I know I've seen you pop up right now. You know, I'm grateful for each other, one another. So grateful for this community. Little did I know when I started, you know, three steps that it would be a community. It would be women, it would be men, it would be people that I could do life with. And so, so thankful for this community. But um, 
practice that, practice that, you know, exercising it outside of our Thrive community, you know, whether it's um, family, friends, um, somebody that's impacted your life, take that time at least once a week um, to exercise that gratitude, you know, um, I have an aunt that serves me and is so, so, you know, awesome to me. Um, I try to be very intentional with my gratitude towards her, um, gratitude towards my children, gratitude to, toward somebody that's just impacted me that week. And so um, that people that served me during the week. And so, you know, it is something that we should really make tangible in our lives um, to speak it, to say it, um, to be it, to be grateful. So anyway, that's my spill on gratitude. And I, um, I just think it changes everything. Gratitude changes everything. Gratitude makes what you don't have ability to look at what you do have and make it be enough it makes it makes you really aware and conscious of what we have um, what we're blessed with and really it's a game changer in that mindset um, when things are going crazy or the kids are going wild um, you know you're like hey I'm thankful that my kids are healthy and well and able um, to run around and to be vocal and you know all of the things so anyway I love, love, love when people practice gratitude. I love to hear it. I love to see it. Um, I, I, all the things. So anyway, I'm excited. We have a lot going on right now. Um, we have got doubles and triples. We've got Punta Cana, um, qualification. There's so much, there's so much that's happening. Um, I don't know about y'all, but are y'all excited about detox? Yes. Yes. Um, I needed a detox like three months ago, like really just kind of getting that body back in, in line with, um, you know, all the things, all the things. Um, and I think it's going to be just a shift, especially the timing. I can never, yes, the 40 K push. How many of y'all are doing that? Hey, y'all make sure guys, y'all sign those contracts. Y'all, um, committed to that. And I know that's a lot of work. I know that it is, you know, work it's effort but guys make sure you're submitting your forms make sure you're doing the do and doing the work because there's a lot of work but yes the 54321 I'm doing that with Maria too last night I got my text message um submitted um but that is an opportunity for you to really look at and see you know what does it require what does this, it take and I I would say that most of you that are on here right now you didn't wake up in the morning and just be like I don't have anything to do I'm just going to get on this vibe tribe you're on here because you want to build this business for options for you and whatever those options look like so um oh my gosh Jamie 40k push no strike so far good job sister good job I'm loving it all right so we've got so much so much going on so much happening yes um Maria is doing her um her last 90 days that's a simple process that it's really just those you know um, execution of the things that we should be doing every single day. Um, and it's, it's really a chance for just that consistency so that when you are, you know, like I said, you make it a part of your day, you make it a part of your process. We are building our businesses. Good job, Megan, no strikes. Uh, we're building our businesses on social platforms, but there is an opportunity for us also to build outside of that. And um, I know for me, when I when I travel, that's a great opportunity for me to talk to people. Um, yes, you can talk behind a mask. Yes, you can have conversation. And if you will be, you know, I always say God gave us um, two eyes, two ears, and one mouth. And for me, I've always been loud. And I always, it always seems like God gave me five mouths because that's the magnitude of which I love to speak. And, you know, the thing is, is that we have to listen. We have to listen to our environment. We have to listen to the people around us. What are they saying? What are they needing? What are they wanting? And I, I feel like when we are a good listener, when we are a good observer, you're going to see, you're going to see if someone, you know, like me lately, I probably need to take move. I'm like getting up slowly in my back and in my, my feet and my, everything's hurting. And so if someone were to see me try to get up, they would, if they were prospecting me for thread, they'd be like, what I saw you kind of struggling getting up. You know, I've got a incredible product actually. Um, uh, this is a true story squirrel for me if y'all have never been on when i'm on y'all 
chat squirrels all over the place. So follow me and you're going to be doing good if you follow. But Courtney and I were on a walk um, when I was in Ohio and there was a lady behind us and she's walking um, with a cane and she's with her friend, but she looked, you know, kind of middle-aged lady, but she was, you know, having a little bit of trouble. So we, we, we said, oh my gosh, you're doing so good. And she's like, oh, I'm in, I'm, ha I'm in my therapy. I just had surgery, you know, knee surgery. And I'm like, oh, do you do an orthoscopic? Just had a small conversation. And I said, are you taking a great glucosamine? And she's like, oh my gosh, yes. That's what my doctor said is glucosamine. And Courtney looked at me and she's like, I would never even thought of that. So she said, she's taking a glucosamine. I didn't stop and go, but you need mine. Mine is so much better. I just listened. I heard where her struggle was and I knew the solution to her struggle. So, but she was already doing something. She was already taking it. So I just encouraged her and went on my day. I didn't have to, oh my gosh, how am I going to work thrive in this? How am I going to have a conversation? I just am familiar with my product. I am familiar with hearing when people have because the needs are always the same. People are needing more energy. People are needing to move. People are needing um, more clarity and focus. People are needing more month at the end of their money. I mean, it's just, there's so many things. And when you've been doing it, guys, I've been doing this for almost eight years, eight years in March. Um, it's just, it just uh, is a part of me. I don't, I don't think about how am I going to be a mom today? I don't think about how am I going to be a wife today? Now, how am I going to show up? Am I going to show up in my best version or my crap? version that's a difference but I don't think about it. I don't go oh my gosh I'm a mom today what should I do um oh my gosh I'm a wife today or I'm a you know I'm an entrepreneur today I just I am so I am a thriver and I'm well aware of what I have and what I have my hands on so as you're going through and I, I Shannon when she messaged me and said you know what's your topic it's going into fall and I, I, you know, I am in the space of, you know, I'm back, I'm back traveling again and, um, ha there's events happening I, and I, congratulations. I've seen so many of you, um, doing booths, doing, um, uh, things, getting out in your community. I don't know if you guys do trick or treat or fall fest. I've actually got, I'm, I'm not going to be there, but, um, we have a casino night with our education foundation, um, that, our cards are and sponsorship is there. Um, we are putting our name out in the community, uh, getting involved in things that people are going back to gathering. And so, you know, whether you're gathering or you're not gathering, you can still put your information back in. Yes, fall vendor events, Katrina. I love that. You know, this is that time where if you're not ready and you don't have the means yet, or you're not in a space where you are able to get a booth or whatever. Oh gosh, I'm so excited, Melly. I love seeing that. Guys, there's so much power, so much power in the face-to-face -face connection. But so if you are, you know, we're like, hey, I, you know, I just can't, um, you know, I can't afford a table or whatever. Um, this is a chance where you, if you attend them, make sure you always have your cards, um, your contact information, the touchless um, scanning with your QR codes. Yesterday, we were um, at a restaurant and um, we had the sweetest waitress. Um, now, I'm going to give you, here's when Chas did good and here's when Chas didn't do good, okay? Not didn't do good, but it's just I wasn't on my A game, right? So the night before, Pat and I went to dinner and great waitress. She was so awesome and just over the top, just very good. And he's like, babe, do you have your card? And I'm like, no, I don't. As I was packing and he said, let's go to lunch, uh, dinner. And I just went ratchet. No, nothing. And I didn't have them. And I've been trying to be a little more intentional. So I didn't have my phone, like all the things. So I didn't have my touch of scan. And I'm like, you know what? I hate this. I'm missing out on an opportunity. So I just took a pin, put my uh, little number and my name. And I'm saying, I'm always looking for amazing women to partner in business with. Text me. You left it on the, left the receipt that there um, and a really nice tip. Um, and then last night when we were out with the girls, we had dinner and I looked around and I said, who has their card? And Steph had her card. And so I put a you know, little note on there and I just said, thank you so much. We had a great time. We had dessert, which was dramatic. I don't know if y'all saw our reels and stuff, but um, I said, thank you. We had a great time. We're always looking because um, we 
we told she's like who are y'all I'm like we're the thrive tribe and like we're always looking for fun women to add to our thrive tribe text us or text me and then I left Steph's card um so it's just again it's just an opportunity to make a new connection um is is that person going to send a text I don't know um, I don't know if they're, you know, a lot of times with our um, business cards, you know, are they going to throw it away? I don't know. That's a marketing investment. It's an investment into my business. But having that card or a way to reach out to someone or them to get back in connection with you, um, airplane, I love to get my card on an airplane. Um, two ladies sitting beside me, it was just, you know, they were having conversation about all different things. They went into um, talking about, you know, Hurricane Harvey, which was several years ago. Go. And if you follow me, you know that, you know, we went down and we were, we worked rescue, rescue and recovery. So there was an immediate connection um, of a conversation. I didn't have to get creative. I didn't have to think, oh my gosh, how am I going to bring up Thrive? And, you know, I'm stressing out. I mean, I need to, I need to build a business. I need to share my business. No, I just listened. And they were talking loud enough for me to overhear the conversation. So, you know, it is very much out there the new people that you need to get connected to and i say this all the time and i know that it's it's something people are like chas you say this all the time but i am i mean if you're a mom you know you say the same thing over and over and over guys you've got to prospect up you've got to prospect people that are willing to invest in the, their health and their wealth they are willing to say you know what i want to do something different i want to to change my my mindset. I want to change, you know, what I'm doing every single day. There is a difference in thinking about it and being about it. There is a difference in taking action and saying, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to, there is no time like right now. If you're looking to change something, if you're saying, I need to grow my network, I need to be more intentional with um, the way that I'm, I'm moving my body. I need to be more intentional um, with leading my team, whatever it is. It's right now. It's not, I'm going to plan for Monday. I'm going to start on a new year. I. It's now. We have the next 60 seconds of our life. We can't change the past. We can't go back and redo, get a do-over. We can do better and we can learn and move forward. And in this business, it is a now response. It is a now, if I miss an opportunity to um, talk to that person in the airport, talk to that waitress, talk... I'm leaving. I don't live here. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm going somewhere else. This is my chance to have that now conversation. Yes. And I saw something popped up a comfort zone. I didn't read it. Guys, you can't operate with standing behind a comfort zone. That is an excuse. And I, I say that with all love and all respect, but a comfort zone is a place we choose to stay. Now, if it's going to harm you, if it's going to hurt you or hurt somebody else, then stay your butt in the comfort zone. But talking to someone, having a conversation, introducing, offering, extending, that is not Somebody saying no to you is not going to harm you. It might harm your feelers. It may um, make you, you know, a little bit your ego. It may hurt your ego, but it's not going to physically harm you. So if you're saying, hey, I'm going to tell you something. Getting out of your comfort zone is getting on this call. Like waking up, being ready to go live is not where I want to be first thing in the morning. That's not... But what does it do? Why do I say to Shannon, put me on the schedule twice a month? I want to I want to show up so that I can be a part of this, so that I can connect with you guys, get tips, get ideas, and and be productive and be where I'm sharing with you guys. So comfort zone is something that I hear a lot. And I just, it, it, you just have to make the decision. And I know, Chas, that's easier. You don't deal with anxiety. You know what? Let's get tools in our toolbox to manage those stresses, to manage those anxieties. What is it? You know, my, my kids, um, both of them deal with anxiety and they're, they've been in incredible therapy for 
gosh, I mean, the last two, three years. And my daughter, when I um, was going through health challenge in June, she's like, mom, you've got to touch something. You've got to feel yourself. You've got to grab something. Is this really happening? Is this something that I'm panicking oh about like outside of my reality? Get get touch and pro you know perspective of what is happening right now and so this is something that this is a, can be a scary space this can be a very scary space because many of us we go to a job we clock in we sit behind a desk or we do a job and we're not pu pushed outside of our comfort zone this is why this industry is so um scary for people you know i shared wednesday night that most people don't grow up with hearing their parents. We are the um, uncommon greatness. Um, they don't, most people don't hear like, okay, let's get a strategy. What direct sales company do you want to go into? Um, MLM is a way that you can create the greatest opportunity of wealth. No, they're being pounded. You know, um, let's go to college. Let's decide what college. I mean, they're already talking to their kids about college in first grade, which is great. I, I have a college degree and I, I'm thankful for that but that is not the only options that's not the only way and so many times we are looking for new ways new ideas get creative here's the thing guys you got to go back to the core of why why and i said this yesterday talking to some leaders i said you know we have a lot of people in this business in this in this team in this team that make a lot of freaking money and it's easy, which is a detriment to us. It's easy to make money. And I say this and somebody's going to get pissed off. I know, but it's easy to make money here and check out. It's easy to build it and check out. Now, it's not going to continue to build. Now, it may continue to build under you, but then what's going to happen is this, this side's going to get a little stronger or this side's going to get a little stronger or, you know, something's going to go away underneath. You have to be consistent in that growth. Yes, could I um, check out? Have I had to once in eight years because of my health? Um, but I had created layered leadership. The second I could step back in, I was stepping back in and saying, what can I do? How can I grow? How can I move forward? How can I expand my reach? How can I um, meet new people? How can I get this product on someone? How can I expose people to the opportunity? So your comfort zone is a place where you've got to say, Okay, what is it that I'm scared of? Why am I staying in my comfort zone? Why am I um, not setting up for an event? Why am I, and a lot of times that's fear. That's fear of whatever that fear looks like to you. But I want you to know that you deserve to have your greatest accomplishments, whether that is changing the landscape of your legacy for your family financially, um, whether that looks like um, changing your body physically, whether that looks like whatever it is. And, um, you know, we look at things and we want to change the outside. If I had a bigger house, if I had, you know, um, less struggles with my weight, if I had less struggles with my health, if I had less struggles with my kids, you know, here's the thing, that internal happiness is truly uh, what we're seeking. Maybe that means, I, and I posted yesterday because I'm reading an amazing book and it's, it's like, you know, we can have these external goals, but if we don't correct the internal targets that are inside of us, those external goals are not going to fix us. I shared around a campfire um, at a retreat last weekend and, you know, we're very intimate at, at retreats and we we're talking about, you know, I said, I want you ladies to understand that this is 200K millionaire status, you know, $500,000 in the bank is not going to bring you happiness. Now, I understand that that may make some of your stresses and your worries and things go away, but I am speaking from experience that more money, more responsibility, more team, all those things, it comes with different stressors. You know, how am I going to manage my money? If you're like me and you come from not having it, um, coming from, you know, struggling, robbing Peter to pay Paul for years of your life, 
and then you have an opportunity like what we have, you want to be very strategic. I'm always thinking of, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go backwards. I don't want to know, owe no one, to, but to love them. I don't want to go into debt. Is this in my budget? So it, uh, it just shifts your stressors of, you know, how do I manage my money? I mean, those things, it's not about the money and the titles and the rank. And all. It's about the security within me. And so when I recognize that, okay, am I feeling secure? The money doesn't make me feel secure. The um, titles don't make me feel secure. I have to feel secure in who I am. I have to feel secure in um, what I do every day. I have to have boldness and confidence that I am um, in the direct sales space, multi-level marketing space. And I'm proud of that. You know, when I was a computer engineer, when I was in corporate America, someone would say, what do you do for a living? I'm like, oh, corporate engineer. And that would pop out of my mouth, like boom, corporate engineer. And I'd probably neck twist and head pop like, and sometimes now, when I'm in my comfortable spaces, maybe um, my community and they're like, hey, what do you do for a living? Direct sales. It's not a typical, it's not something that people hear every single day and they sure don't see people making a living off of it. So it's very uncommon. So I have to say, what is it that brings me joy? My joy comes from being able to encourage people to say, you know what? What are those goals, dreams, aspirations, things that you have? that you want to accomplish and being able to cheer people on, being able to identify what is that thing that's barrier, that a barrier, that roadblock, what is holding them back? Because if you can identify in someone that barrier, that something that is holding them back, when that barrier is removed, they become unstoppable. And we say all the time, you've got to reach deep. You know, your why has got to make you cry. And that's cliche, but it's true. But what happens in this is we have so many people, like I said, making money. It's easy to check out. And what happens is their why is no longer deep enough for them. So they come into this business and they need to make money. Maybe they've um, recently in a situation where they're the sole provider providing for their kids and they are working their VIP 800, VIP 1600. They are sharing, they're talking with everybody. Um, they're talking to everybody about the opportunity and they start making a little bit of money. They make a little extra hundred dollars a week or a thousand dollars a week or $10,000 a week, whatever it is they need. And so now it's like, I'm in a coast mode. I am just going to, you know, work this thing as I can. I'm going to put my hands in this thing. I'm going to start doing this and I'm going to start doing this. And now that I'm a leader, I'm going to do this. And, and they complicate it all. And then they get frustrated because now they're not duplicatable. People can't duplicate that. So what do you do? You go back to the basics. You go back to that depth in your soul and go, why am I here? For me, why did I, why do I do this product? I'll just have the top of it. Why do I do this product? I do this product because I need it to get my butt out of bed. I need to, I need that help. Just like a lot of people. Oh, well, you're addicted. You're no people need coffee. They, whatever they need their vice to get them out of bed. I'm thankful that mine's premium nutrition. I love this product. I am passionate about this product and I'm passionate about this opportunity. Guys, I sit around and look at, you know, I get to travel. I get to pour into people. I get to inspire. I get to encourage. I get to hear um, the true stories. I get to hear, I get to do life. I get to spend one-on-one -on -one time with people. I get to make an impact. I, I, I like, I get overwhelmed thinking about what we get to do. Um, Tony was at my house. Um, if y'all don't know Tony, he's our media guy. And he was at my house and uh, they were doing filming for Lavelle. And I'm like, I want you to film the girls like this. I've had, you know, so many opportunities to share my voice. I want these girls heard. And um, he was like, I want to grab you for just a few minutes. And literally y'all, I snotted, ugly snot the whole time. Like literally like, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know that he got any footage of me because I just cried the whole time. And he's like, Are you okay? He's like, I don't think he knew the estrogen that he was going to be walking into. And I'm like, Tony, I am so overwhelmed. And yes, life took me down a different journey in June. And so my gratitude is on an elevated space, but I literally stopped cried. And I said, 
I'm just so overwhelmed about what we have. And friends, you have that same opportunity. You have that same product. You have the same potential to reach that mama um, right there in the grocery store line. You have that chance to reach somebody in, you know, maybe if you guys are going to Vegas or you're traveling or you're, you know, guys, you always have an opportunity to meet a need. And that I, I believe is the greatest, the greatest calling, the greatest gift. Now that doesn't always mean monetarily. That doesn't mean I have to give everything away. It means maybe you're just giving your smile. Maybe you're just giving your confidence. Maybe you're just giving that encouragement. Maybe there's someone that, um, you know, they, they don't have that mom, that friend, that sister, that, that loved one that, you know, encourages them. And you are that confidence and encouragement that day. Maybe they need a prayer warrior in their life and you're that. We get to get paid to do those kind of things. We get to get paid to help people live a better life. Why would you stay in your comfort zone and not share that with the world? When I get in my feels, when I get in my way and I start to you know, question or doubt, because I do, I do. Yes, at this level, having the privilege and honor to lead y'all, I still get in my own way. I still think about what are they going to think of me? Um, what are my neighbors going to think of me? You know, like I used to tease and I quit saying in this because I just was like, I'm not gonna put that negative energy out there because I would say they think we're drug dealers because we like have cars and a house and uh, we don't go to a job. We work from home. They're going to think, what do they really do for a living? But guess what? I watch them day after day dads, moms leave early, early in the morning, get home late, late at night. They're, they're gone before sunrise and they get home after sunset. Their kids are playing in the yard. They're missing those chances. They're missing that opportunity. Do I think everybody needs to come in, quit their job? And no, I don't. I think maybe this can be supplemental. It can be a side hustle. It can be whatever they want, but there's options. There's options. Maybe um, my neighbor is, you know, they're their house broke. They have a beautiful home and they're going to their full-time job and then working a part-time job at night. So why would I not share? The best thing they can do is not invite me to a neighborhood barbecue. Okay. But what if this is what they need? What if they're struggling with their, with their health? What if they're, this is something you have. So as we're preparing, we're going through this month, um, going through the promos, new product, new things. I, I do. I want to challenge you. Get out of that comfort zone. And I'm not talking, if, you know, if you're the one that posted that comfort zone on there, please know my heart heart. I am not singling you out. I talk to you guys with love. I talk to you from my heart. Um, I always ask if we're one-on-one -on -one, do you mind if I speak into your life? Like you got to grant and deny permission, friend. Do not allow someone to speak into your social media, to speak into your head, to speak into your heart, to speak into your mind, unless you give them permission. If you would not trade places right now with them, and that doesn't mean you would trade your bank account. No, every area of their life. Just because someone has money, just because they have status, just because um, their body looks good. Do not say I would trade places with them if you don't know all the things about all the things. You see somebody on social media, you see somebody on a platform and they look like they got it together. You don't know what's going on in their life. So don't say you would trade places with them because you have no clue their struggles, their obstacles and what they're going through. So make sure that the people that you're allowing to speak into your life, to speak into your mind, to speak into your day are people that you've said, I give you permission. So they are, they've given us so many things. They've given us um, our doubles and triples. They've given us trips. They've given us product. They've given us all the things. Focus on what you'll do with it. Um, if you're someone that has already qualified for your doubles and triples, here's the thing. A lot of times though, you want those people to be brand new people, but the truth of the matter is that doubles and triples can be qualified with the existing promoters. Get a goal. Make sure that if someone is, and I say this and someone's going to get mad, but that's okay. Y'all have to let me through it, but you're not getting double and triple just so you can get a banner and a shout out. You've got double and triple because that means somebody got additional product to put in their body, to put on someone else's body. So if you are someone that qualified for double and triple and where are those orders coming from? then the question is, where is that product going to go? 
not to just sit on the shelf. Now you will have, we talk about our lists all the time. You're going to have people that they come in, they join you with for a promo. Um, that's fine. There's people on our list that we target and we reach out to and say, hey, we've got an incredible promo going on right now. Um, companies offering this and I'm offering this, com compounding it, here's what you can get. Yes, I get that. But if people on your team, if you're in a position where they take advantage of um, your doubles and triples and because you're offering cash or credits or whatever you're offering, ask them, find out what is the strategy? What is the plan? And where is that product going to go? Who is that product going to get on? How many, many experiences are they going to sell? How many people are they going to expose to the product? Move that product by moving the story forward, by um, sharing that with people that need it, not just people that have already experienced the product. So set that goal. If you're double and triple qualified, where is this product going? Now, if they're your promoters and you know, you're know you you're not their boss, but you can guide them and say, hey, this is that chance for us to get people started on the product, get people started at a discount, get people started um, in a way that maybe they wouldn't before. So take advantage of that, but don't just do it for accolades or recognition. Do it for the landscape of their legacy, whether that means now they're going to feel better. I, I yesterday, oh gosh, I have been on so many three-way calls and yesterday I was on one and um, I had the opportunity to hear a day one, day two, day three experience. And she's like, I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm loving it. And we're like, I can't wait to hear your day 30. I can't wait to see how productive you are by day 30. And so that is where the excitement comes right there is where you continue to grow. Not just, I got a great deal. And I'm going to let this sit on my shelf. You got a great deal. You were able to get that on someone. Now, how can I go make this grow? How can I invest in my future? How can I invest in that the next time we have doubles and triples, this product has already duplicated and triplicated. Your doubles and triples are for you to double and triple your stories, your experiences, um, your opportunity to get in somebody's hands. So Make sure you're taking advantage of that, but make sure that you're using it wisely. I also put the challenge out on Wednesday night. Guys, we've talked about the algorithm, so we're blue in the face. And you're like, Cass, what do you know about algorithm? Guys, I do have a nerdy side of me. And I'm in a lot of groups, um, masterminds and different things like that, where we talk about, you know, how do we get ahead of the algorithm? How do we master this? Well, if you've watched anything on Facebook, you know that Facebook right now is like under the microscope. Here's the thing. They want to show us what we like and love. And if you are just liking and loving all things Thriver, they're going to say, you know, we're not manipulating the algorithm. Um, Star likes Shannon stuff and Star likes Chassa stuff. And so, so I'm going to show Star and Shannon more stuff. What is that going to probably be? Thrive stuff. So you've got to turn that upside down. You've got to be intentional going out there and finding people um, that you can connect with right now. Um, today I'm going to, um, oh gosh, mini ha ha hoo hoo something falls. I don't know. It's, it's here in Minnesota. And so I am this morning when I get off of this, I am going to look up the hashtags for mini, I think it's mini ha ha. I don't know. Ha ha ha. Uh, but it's, it's a place where I'm going to go for my walk, my run. And I'm going to go look, I'm going to look and see who's used it. Um, I was told that, uh, a certain park. So this week, mini ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> um, this week I, it was, um, oh gosh, it was Fort Snell or Snelling or something like that. So I went on there and I was actually, Steph's mic in front of me. I was actually, um, going to take an Uber there, but I didn't, I didn't like, uh, so much about it, but I did post and, um, oh, Jackie's 40 minutes from here. Yeah, you should take a, you should come in and go for a walk with me. Um, but I didn't, um, I didn't really like, you know, all the pictures, but I did take the time. There were several people that went for a walk and I posted on there. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be there this week. What was the walk like? I'm going to be there this week. Are the leaves changing? I literally spent that time being intentional with 
my conversation. Why? Because it's relevant. It makes me relevant. Why? Because it helps me get my five, four, three, two, one. Here's the thing. You are always going to have an opportunity to scroll hole or grow your business. And for me, social media is an opportunity to grow. I'm just going to be 1000 with you guys. Social media gets me in a space sometimes where I'm like, I just can't with social media. And I love that I can go there. I can work my business and get off. Um, my daughter sent me this funny, funny, like TikTok thing. And it was like a girl, she was like taking a photo. She was trying to eat a chip and her camera was falling and her hair was all messy. And she's like crying. And she's like me trying to be relevant and stay on top of the algorithms in social media. And I'm like, same girl, same. Like sometimes I get super overwhelmed, but their simplicity is still the same. You know, finding new connections, finding new people to have conversation with. Just like when you're out and about, listen, listen. Now, I know some people would say, well, you can't listen to social media. Yes, you can. You can see what people are reeling, doing reels on. You can see what they're going live about. They're going live. You can hear um, what they're struggling with, you know, and that is your opportunity to have a conversation about it. Um, last night, Lisa and I were talking and she's like, you know, asking me questions about, you know, how do you do this on Instagram? Well, guess what? I am looking through those hashtags. And last night we had a fun dessert. We had a fun place and it's a place where people will check in there. They'll go there. And, you know, I can go look at 7,000 people's desserts and go, oh my gosh, that looks super fun. We were there last night. We had such a great time. Um, that's conversation and it's relevant. Then if I find that person that I want to follow, like, and engage with today, I talk about dessert, but next week they're posting about how they went for a walk or maybe they go to mini ha ha next week. I don't know. Um, I could say, oh my gosh, I went for a walk while I was there. It was so pretty. Just continuing to have that conversation. Now you may say, well, that's plain patty cake. Guess what? Not everyone. And I said comfort zone, but this is not staying in my comfort zone. This is being genuine and authentic. Um, not everyone do I go smash and talk to them about the product or the opportunity. I wait until I can meet a situation with my solution to their problem. And when you do that, guys, it's a beautiful space. It doesn't feel um, fake. It doesn't feel um, strained. It just feels natural. And you know, you're know, you going to have to, if you woke up and you got on this early Zoom to have tips and tricks and to be poured into, you're gonna have to get outside of your comfort. And so that going back to my nerd corner here is Facebook, and the algorithms, you're not going to hack it. You're not going to be smarter than a computer. Um, the thing is, is those computers cannot put the human emotion into what you have. And so I, I've challenged you guys, I've charged you with, um, do it and prove me. I'd love for you to prove me wrong, but I know that you won't. Um, go live in the next seven days as much as you can, whether that's your stories, your reels, um, your Facebook newsfeed, have, go live about anything. Go live about whatever you're, you're doing. You're gonna make a post, go live. We've talked about, and we've got you connected with, you know, your five things that are in your niche, the five things that you're passionate about. Um, if you're in those groups, find out if you can go live in the group. Don't just make a post to be relevant. You know, if you do a Flex Friday or, um, you know, Thankful Thursday, um, you know, say you're in a dog group and I just use some of the groups I'm in, but, you know, you're in a, a dog group. Maybe you can go live and, you know, say, I am so excited. Look at my pup. She loves to watch TV or whatever. I recorded a, um, just a story, which is just a cute little clip. It was Maggie sitting on my bed and she's just watching TV. Super cute. That is live. It's recorded. It's video where people will watch it. More engagement. And what Facebook is doing, what Instagram is doing, you're in these, you're in these groups, you're in these hashtags, you're in these relevancies. We've spent so much time having you write down what groups, what things do you love? Um, you know, Elizabeth loves traveling, hiking, um, outdoors, outdoor world, all those things. You're already in these groups. You're already in these community and connections. Now 
go live where more people are going to see it. Um, those people in that group, that algorithm is saying, y'all like each other's stuff already. Y'all are already in community. Go live in there. Now it's it's going to push you to those people, whether that's a 10,000 group, 5,000 group, it's going to push you to those people. But not only that, now you're linked. Have you ever seen on your social platforms where it says, you may know? Um, and I'm like, yeah, I know them. Delete. No, I'm just kidding. That's just chast being ugly. Um, I'm like, why are you keep suggesting this person to me? I already said no. Um, but, you know, this is that chance where it's going to say, you know what? You guys are in this group. Y'all like the things that you like together. There's a potential that the person that this person likes may like your stuff because y'all are all relevant. So that's how it, it just intertwines and that's how it connects. So you have the opportunity, but so many times we are in people's business instead of working our business. Guys, don't get caught up in it. Don't get caught up in all the things going on. Control your thoughts, control your mind, control your action and say, why am I here? I, I ask people all the time, so why do you, you know, people are like, oh my God, I'm so glad Facebook went down. Like, oh, it felt so good. I'm like, then why do you stay? Like, why are you still on Facebook? I was, I'll be honest. The reason I stay on Facebook, I build my business on social media. I love to connect with my friends and my family, people I haven't, but guys, there's honestly been more time where Facebook's got, social media has gotten me down in the crap dumps than it's encouraged me. I'm just being honest. I don't know if you guys get a different news feed than I do. But over the last year, it's gotten me more heartbroken. It's gotten me more sad. It's gotten, you know, like I have to control what goes on. That's why it's so important for you to have your C first. That's why it's important that you follow the people that you want to be connected to. So Shannon, I know that I have just gone off the chain with my stuff, but I just feel like we've got to take action. You've got to be in the trenches and in the zone. And I'm going to tell you right now, people are coming back to Lavelle. People are coming back to thrive. Um, yesterday I had one that, um, has been gone for four years. Um, literally at dinner, um, Steph was my assistant cause I couldn't see, she was helping me type it in, um, getting them ready. And one thing I will say, guys, if you're enrolling new people, um, make sure that their, um, their accounts when they create them are working. I had four people, I hate to say this, I'm have to send in a ticket, I had four people that they couldn't get their account created, something happened, email wasn't matching, it was just crazy. So just make sure you're helping your people walk through. Um, if you have a new account coming in that you put, yay, first to Canada account. Um, yes, I'm praying Canadians are gonna be open and be able to move in group, um, but make sure they're getting their account completed and you're getting that email. So make sure that process, don't just send somebody your, you know, website and, you know, here, do this, make sure you're walking them through the process. So um, I know that we are going to about to go into our devotion time. And Hey, I just want to say this guys, if you are on and you know, the devotion is not your jam, we never want to be a space um, where we pour our beliefs, our mindset, again, grant and deny. So this is that time we're going to go into, um, I don't know if we are going to do updates or we're going to go right into our devotion because I know our devotion is a little bit longer. Um, you can hop off if you want. Um, if, if this is not, you know, your jam, feel free. Um, but take this time, you know, if you hop off, you know, do something, whether you meditate, you pray, Whatever you do, get quiet. Take some time to get quiet because you're going to start your day and it's going to get loud. And you can go back to that time of, I just got in the space yesterday when my anxiety went through the roof. I have a um, guided breathing on my phone and it's just for two minutes and it's breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. It just got me just in a space of calm your chops. Just be, you know, oh, drop in the comments below if you've never won on the Vibe Tribe. I just ordered some more cups. So um, y'all know those are things I love to give away. So Shannon, make sure that I am accountable to sending that out. If you've won something for me and I haven't followed through, please do not be that person that, that 10 years later, you're like, I don't like Chaz because she never sent me my cup. Guys, give me some grace tell me I didn't do follow through. I am 
always notorious for that. But this is that time if you um, want to jump off, we're going to go into our devotion time. Um, so just know that we're going to read some scripture and it's going to go there. We want you to always feel um, comfortable and in a space where you belong because you all belong. And um, Shannon, thank you for being so amazing. I'm thankful um, for you and for Star and Hyder, all of you. I mean, I miss somebody. Somebody don't get your feelings hurt. I am thankful that you girls show up every day and y'all cover us because that is servant leadership. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to shut up in just a minute, but you're learning how to lead the masses. You are learning. I, I'm going to share this funny. I was talking to one of my leaders and something happened. And this last week I was cleaning a toilet after a retreat and it wasn't a clean, pretty toilet. It was like, Bleh. and she's like, ah, you clean. I'm like, you know what? Servant leadership. You have to learn to do the things that you don't love in this business. Are you laughing at me? But she's laughing. I'm going to put her on. She's, like, she's laughing at me. <laughs> You have to learn to do the things that you don't want to do and you don't like in this business. It's not going to be all paychecks and prosperity and great stories. There's going to be times where it's going to get crappy. And there's going to be times it's going to get hard. There's going to be times it's going to be out of your comfort zone. But I'm going to tell you, friend, it's going to be freaking working, worth it. So I'm going to pass it off. And like I said, if you are, you know, you want to jump off right now, then go ahead. Um, but happy Flex Friday to all of you. Guys, get creative. We used to have so much fun with our Flex Friday. It's fall, y'all. Let's have fun with it. Post on your pumpkins. Guys, if you have not gotten the gratitude pumpkin, get you a pumpkin. Start gratituding every day. Love you guys so, so much. Thank you again for having me. Y'all go be blessed and be productive. Do you want um, to pick a winner real quick before I read? Quick uh, question. Oh, yeah. Let me oh, go okay. to this chat. Go ahead, Melanie. Um, Monday is Canada's Thanksgiving. Are we having a vibe tribe or is, are we not? I believe we still are. Okay. If anything changes, I'll let everybody know. All right. Just thought I'd ask because this is Thanksgiving weekend for Canada. So. Good, Jess. Jennifer Hillier. Congratulations. IER. Message me in um, Messenger and I will go ahead and get your information. We are on day 31, a renewed sense of purpose. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Psalm 1611. If you're experiencing tough times, you may be asking yourself, what does God want me to do next? Perhaps you're pondering your future, uncertain of your plans, unsure of your next step. But even if you don't have a clear plan for the next step of your life's journey, you may rest assured that God does. God has a plan for the universe, and he has a plan for you. He understands that plan as thoroughly and completely as he knows you. If you seek God's will earnestly and prayerfully, he will make his plans known to you in his own time and in his own way. Perhaps your vision of God's purpose for your life has been clouded by a wish list that you have expected God to dutifully fulfill. Perhaps you have fervently yeah, hoped that God would create a world that unfolds according to your wishes, not his. If so, you have probably experienced more disappointment than satisfaction and more frustration than peace. A better strategy is to conform your will to God's. Sometimes God's plans and purposes may seem unmistakably clear to you. If so, push ahead. But other times he may lead you through the wilderness before he directs you to the promised land. To be patient and keep seeking his will for your life. When you do, you'll be amazed at the marvelous things that an all-powerful, all-knowing God can do. Our quotes. God will make obstacles serve his purpose. Miss Charles E. Kalman. Underneath each trouble, there is a faithful purpose. D.H. Spurgeon. 
God does not discipline us to subdue us, but to condition us for a life of usefulness and blessedness. Billy Graham. For further reflection, Proverbs 19.21, Mark 3.35, Romans 12, verses 2 through 3, and Ephesians 1.11. Today's prayer. Dear Lord, let your purposes be my purposes. Let your priorities be my priorities. Let your will be my will. Let your word be my guide. And let me grow in faith and wisdom today and every day. Amen. Thank you again for jumping on this morning. Jennifer Hillier, if you can please message me through um, Facebook Messenger. My last name is C-O-C-H-R-A-N. Thank you, Chastity. And everybody have a great Friday. And don't forget to flex. See y'all later.